the automation will help you become more disciplined, right? And not only are you more disciplined, um, it also detaches you from the emotional roller coasters of our up and down the market. Statistically speaking, lump sum over the very long term actually outperform regular investing. <laughs> I think a lot of people will probably be surprised by this. Statistically speaking, lump sum outperforms regular investing. The largest risk to any portfolio is actually the investor themselves. Because if you if you remember, um, eighty percent of personal finances behavior is only twenty percent knowledge. In regards to the U.S. stocks, I look at it. I don't look at it specifically as U.S. stocks. It's it's actually global companies who just happen to be in the U.S. Amazon advertising is larger than YouTube. Do you know? In the U.S., is the other way around. You actually don't want to have a majority party. You want them to always fight each other, the political parties. Because if they're fighting each other, they leave the businesses alone. And if the businesses are running on their own, they're doing better. Because there's no interference. Eh. But in terms of actual ability to push through and, and achieve their goals, I would say not many people can invest lump sum and, and have the ability to go through the ups and downs and do not panic. Kasi pag naglaga ng pera, tapos bagsak agad yung market in the, last, in the first two years, panic ka na eh, especially if you don't know what you're doing. If you do a regular investing, less likely for you to get panic. So normally for people na may lump sum, I will also tell them either we split this over time or we do the lump sum but you still do the regular investing. That's very important to protect yourself from emotional decisions kasi the largest risk to any portfolio is actually the investor themselves. Because if you if you remember um 80% of personal finances behavior is only 20% knowledge. This 80%, ito yung nagre-react sa mga news. Eh. Yeah, you look, look at the news, may mga layoffs, ganun-ganun. If you react, your IQ goes down. Right? Because, the brain freeze ka na eh. You can, you can think properly. So, so, I think it's important for us to be able to put structures such that you can be very successful. So, May mga strategies ako that I can I can help people put them in a structure such that I would say the success rate is almost 100%. Um just because they're following the structure. And and if they're following the structure they they, they don't panic. They they invest regularly. And by the time that the the time frame is finished, right? The likely scenario they end up positive. The part where um, people lose money and exit early, ito yung mga tao na they don't like structures. I would say um, you can you can do very well or you can do very badly if you don't put a structure. That's fine. As long as you can take the do very badly part, no problem. But if you're the part type na when, it, when your portfolio is doing very badly and then you panic, then we have a problem, <laughs> right? Because guaranteed yung loss, eh. guaranteed yung loss in the short term. Eventually, because it's just like calamities in the world, right? Can you say that there's never gonna be a calamity? You can guarantee every single year or every few years or every like you know typhoon season, there will be a disaster that guaranteed. But after that, recovery, right? Same thing. So investments ganun din. You have you have to prepare for the down downturns because it will happen. It will definitely happen. Uh the question is what do you do? Are you taking advantage of those of those downturns? Because downturns are actually good for the economy in the long term because it 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 removes all those companies who are not doing very well anyway and then the the uh the demand for the products and services go to the stronger players. Right? So parang think of it like, for example, 
may mga Jollibee uh, uh, in one street, let's say there's Jollibee, McDonald's, uh, Carinderia, and like some other small stores, right? Um, when there's a recession, the likely scenario is that the Jollibee and McDonald's will probably stay because they have prob they probably have less cash flow issues versus the Sari Sari store or the other smaller stores, right? So of course, hopefully we can help these other stores. But the reality is that they will likely not be around anymore for whatever reason. When they're not around anymore, right? Para ito yung mga companies that go bankrupt, nawala, right? Pero yung demand for their products and services, hindi naman nawawala eh. People will still eat, right? So, still eat and drink. So, the demand for their products and services, the smaller companies, will just go to the whoever still alive, whoever, whoever still uh, operating, right? So, typically what happens, it goes to the stronger players or at least the players who can survive. So, what is crucial actually, that's why we say cash flow for businesses are very important because what you, what, what you really need to do is that you need to be able to survive the downturns because when the downturns are finished right some of the competition that cannot survive it yung market nila will be available for everyone so even if you're not the strongest player you also grow again just because this demand will have to find other suppliers parang ganun. it's it's normal yeah yeah <laughs> all right yeah 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 thank you for for sharing like a, a perspective of how you do things, nakakatuwa lang, no? And as we have been talking about global investing, we know that the U.S. has been a bright spot. Do you think yung mga stocks sa U.S., would it still be good this year, 2024, and in the next years? Kung okay siya, until kailan? At ano ba yung mga factors? Bakit okay? Yung sa US, is it because of sa tech or may other factors pa? Or kung hindi, do you think yung US na mga stocks ay pa-decline na? And kung sakali pa-decline na, ano yung mga factors that will make it flat or correct? Yeah, and in regards to the US stocks, I look at it, I don't look at it specifically as US stocks. It's, it's actually global companies who just happen to be in the US, right? So there are not, it's not just... It just so happened that marami sila sa US, but there are also global companies in other parts of the world, right? Like, for example, Nestle, uh, there will be in Switzerland, right? Unilever will be in Europe. Uh, yung mga fashion companies will be in Europe. So they're not all in they're not all in the US, mga profitable companies, but there's so, so many of them in the US. So in the US, I'm not actually very concerned about the US economy. A little bit, but not. it's not going to be entirely dependent on U.S. alone. So U.S. needs to do well, but it doesn't have to be do so extremely well for, for the companies to, to make a profit. What is important is that the growth will, will spread out across the, the, across the world eventually, right? So if you notice, a lot of these large, stable companies, Apple, Google, Amazon, Meta, uh, Facebook, yung mga ganun, right? A lot of them are US based, but they're not actually US companies alone. They are global companies. Their market is not just in the US, their market is everywhere, right? When you have, let's say you have Google, right? Do you just use Google in the US? No, right? You Everywhere you go, whether you're in Australia, New Zealand, Europe, Middle East, Asia, you're using Google. It's a global company. The revenues are coming from everywhere. Same with Apple. Same with Amazon. Amazon, a lot of people think it's just an e-commerce company. Do you know that Amazon has five businesses in one? And one example of this is one of their large businesses is uh, AWS, uh, Amazon Web Services. They're one of the largest in uh, cloud computing, right? If you like to watch Netflix, right? Netflix actually use Amazon. Amazon Web Services, not the not the uh, e-commerce, right? What that means is that there's actually a risk, right? If Amazon goes down, Netflix will not exist because <laughs> it uses uh, Amazon Web Services. So that's a risk, 
right? Uh, but the fact that Amazon is very dominant, a lot of companies use their services, right? Uh, for at least cloud computing. Um, they're actually <laughs> raking in so much money from that part, right? Um, another part of business for Amazon, for example, is their advertising. Do you know that the Amazon advertising is larger than YouTube? Do you know? Uh, but maybe some of you know. But uh, 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 yeah. so a lot of people get surprised uh, that Amazon advertising is larger than YouTube advertising. Okay. Mm. And the question people ask me, how is that possible? <laughs> and a, lot, a lot of people are like watching YouTube. Uh, like sometimes on, on, on this show or any other show, there's always ads here and there, right? Actually, if you if you think about it, it does make sense. Because if you are an advertiser, right? Saan ka mag advertise Doon sa YouTube na siguro uh, maraming advertisement tapos baka merong bibili. Tapos hindi mo alam kung is it because of that advertisement or not. Maybe, right? Or you advertise a product right almost at the time that it's relevant for that buyer to buy. Kasi di ba, pupunta ka na naman Amazon kung meron kang bibili. Eh. Pero right, right, for example, bibili ka ng basketball, ng bola, right? May katabi ng bola, may advertisement na shoes. Kailangan mo ng shoes. Hindi most likely bibili ka, di ba? So for an advertiser, it's a it's like almost a direct correlation na I put this amount of money, this is the amount of revenue I'm getting, so I'm more willing to spend more. Direct direct impact and and uh, bigger yung earnings, uh, more or less, right? And then a lot of these a lot of these companies right now. They're also using artificial intelligence in already. Eh? Like even if you watch Netflix, same same with Amazon, or, or a lot of these, even Google, right? Uh, Google, Microsoft, ganun, lahat sila ganun. Um, if you watch Netflix, ah, you'll realize that you watch certain shows, and then for some reason, parang marami ng ganung klasing show na recommend sa you. It's kind of like this this uh, algorithm that's already studying your behavior. Na oh. If you watch a lot of key drama, the next time, ang dami ng key drama na lumalabas sa choices mo. Or you, la- you watch like action, nagiging action lahat. You watch, let's say, Tagalog movies, dumadami yung mga Tagalog na, na ni, tawag yan, uh, recommended shows. Parang ganun, di ba? So, parang, yeah, I, I think I think the US, technically, um, you have a strong Parang a lot, a lot of the businesses there are actually uh, very strong global companies. Um, I'm not too concerned about the U.S. In fact, in the U.S., the way I look at it is basically like this. Yung politics nila, right? Uh, in most countries, you actually want like a, par, uh, a majority party to win so you can get things done. Kasi yung debate, never ending. Eh. Never ending debate, so walang walang action, right? So if a majority party, then at least merong may movement. In the US, is the other way around. You actually don't want to have a majority party. You want them to always fight each other, the political parties. Because if they're fighting each other, they leave the businesses alone. And if the businesses are running on their own, they're doing better. Kasi walang interference. Eh. Uh, if, if there's one party that is like too strong, uh, normally, what happens is they start intervening on 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 the businesses uh, or or any other things that they can you know intervene, and it creates a lot of destruction. And bumabagal yung innovation and movement because companies will now have to look into uh, um, regulatory requirements and all these other things. So, so yeah, so I would say. I think long, longer term, I think U.S. will still be a major player uh, from the fact that there's a lot of money and comp- there's a lot of companies with, who can get a lot of funding in the U.S. for their growth. And they're able to kind of like like help launch companies on a global scale. 
Um, yeah, so that's 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 the main advantage, no. Uh, I think other countries are lagging behind in that part. I, 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 if you if you look around, you ha- you hardly see many companies from any from other countries who have a large number of companies go global. Uh, most most of them are coming from the U.S. Because mas madali yung fundraising, mas madali mas easier yung easier to find talent, easier to find uh, in, uh, parang support to to kind of like um uh uh grow your company uh easier to find a market also because they're a large consumer market right so immediately meron ka ng consumers uh they're from 300 plus million people uh and then if you're successful in the US you're probably also going to be successful in Canada North America and then move to Europe and then you have to adjust a little bit for Asia because it's a different culture right um so so yeah so i think us will still be a powerhouse for a while uh but there might be adjustments from time to time obviously uh, other countries are also catching up yeah. the automation will help you become more disciplined right and not only are you more disciplined um it also detaches you from the emotional roller coasters of our up and down the market Statistically speaking, lump sum over the very long term actually outperform regular investing. <laughs> I think a lot of people will probably be surprised by this. Statistically speaking, lump sum outperforms regular investing. 